The final series, we're here. The teams are determined. These two are gonna fight it out. Infernal Shrine's our first map in the best of five and Soundless is fighting against Chili Mountain after Chili Mountain was able to claim victory against Team Ash in the previous match. The step ladder system here at the playoffs for the Masters Clash continues and the winner of this one goes to Paris. Three teams are already qualified for the main event. The offline final taking place on the 10th and 11th of July. And we of course have the donuts, we got the hardos, and we got 30k qualified for it and these two they want to go there too but only one can join the top three so whoever wins the series goes and also if you didn't catch the previous series once again a quick reminder if you're a little bit surprised by the players that are currently playing for chili mountain first of all smexy replaced banana age so he is playing with chili mountain and if they qualify he will be at the offline event Wubi, on the other hand he is just a stand-in today for backward and therefore he's just a sub so has zero impact on what's happening with the uh, finals that's at least my current information that I have so we'll be it's just subbing in here today now as we're heading into this let's have a bit of a quick look at our bands well, well we are on infernal shrines and Hogger gets there for band haven't really seen a whole lot of Hogger play in the previous games but here it makes a whole lot of sense to get rid of him and we also got rid of Tyke Sonoma Odin but of course you got Diablo as the first pick on the side of the ice cream and they have been in the position where the entire time as the playoffs were happening they could just chill they took the number four spot in the regular season so this is the only match they have to play if they were able to prepare a couple of cheeses a couple of strategies or specific maps that they trained for that the opponents aren't aware of they have an opportunity now to showcase that and of course they have been watching the other games chili mountain of course has only played one additional series but that went to uh, the full Lisa, distance and therefore they might have a bit of an idea of what they want to do here they could literally just sit tight watch the games and discuss a bit of how they would like to counter some of the drafts and picks on the other side now we're seeing the red team open up with cassia and with uther smexy again on uh, um, our paladin here or whatever uther is not that i care uh and we are gonna medif Medivh and Vala. So Vala on Infernal Shrines. Vala is in this weird spot where a lot of teams don't really like her all that much anymore after the rework. And yeah. And Vala and Jimmy have been dropped off a little bit. This is one of the things, by the way. Why the fuck does Blizzard always think, hmm, there's a hero that sees a lot of play that is not necessarily OP. And you know what? We're gonna rework him completely! And I was like, uh, team, team, how about we rework a hero that is real shit right now that nobody wants to play? Would that, would that be a thing? Nah! Not needed. We're gonna rework the stuff that's already in the game and working. It's like always like, mm. So yeah. For all the hate that I have for Atanas, why don't you give him a little bit of love? Change him a little bit. Make him useful. That would be something. Anyways. With Vala in the game, obviously on Infernal Shrines, you get a lot out of the multi-shot setup one way or another. With Medivh, you can keep her alive even easier. We got on the other side now, <laughs> Uther, Anna, Malthael. Nano boosted Malthael with a divine shit. Yeah, okay. I'm going to take two of them, please. So that is already disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And it could work. And when it gets played... We get the crybaby, so uh, could play around the trade a little bit. And Hydra is playing Blaze. Okay, setting us up with a double front line on Diablo and Blaze, having Medivh in the back to help them out a little bit. And here we go. Last pick for Maka has been playing a lot with uh, the Birdie. A lot of Falstead, but he's banned, so could play his notorious Mephisto. That could be Nano Boosted too. And they go for the rat instead. Junkrat is in. Ladies, we're kicking it off. Game number one in the final best of five here at the playoffs between Team Soundless and Chili Mountain. The series starts. The playoffs are coming to an end with this one. Hydra on Blaze for the blue team. 
they were able to watch until now, but now they have to show what they got. We got Neno P on Vala, obviously heading into the fire at will here. Sir Ice Cream is playing Diablo, Falender on Medivh, and Shamsik is playing and winning game number one, whereas Chili Mountain is putting their faith in the Wubi on Malthael. He's going to support it by Smexy on Uther with a Divine Shield. Marcus Anna, Marke, yeah, is going to drop that Nano Boost, and we have Azerite on Cassia, and Gia is playing Junkrat. All right, the brawl in the middle is already starting up, and that's kind of decent for Nano P. If he connects a couple multi shots, then he is going to stack already. Late game is always kind of neat. And if you stack Vala well on this and it goes to a long game, then she is getting so much damage on the objective in particular. And that was a nice opening. Already four hits connected. And Team Soundless, they of course want to go to the offline finals here. I've been talking in the previous series a bit about some of the players that are uh, slightly younger, that would also have to get parental permission. And Falander is one of them. Falander is not quite sure yet if he would be able to go because he was talking to his parents a bit about it But of course as long as you're not really qualified, it's also a bit of a moot point His parents probably thinking why exactly would I get into that argument if it might not even happen? So uh, first they got to qualify and then we'll see what happens and for them It's important in general because they would need to get visas uh, the Russians obviously need visas for to go to France and therefore you need some time to prepare for all of this. And the offline finals, as I mentioned, are in roughly a month, so there's pretty... I mean, there's plenty of time to prepare, but still things that need to be considered here too. And also, I mean, we gotta throw it out there, Ultralisk is getting accompanied uh, by his mom, who is gonna drive him to the event. First of all, that's insanely cute. So shout out to mom. And second of all, she might not trust him. He's like, yeah, I'm going to an offline event. You know, I can make some money there. And I'm like going to an event and I'm playing with a couple of guys. It's like an esports thing. And she's like, yeah, sure. You're just going to a casino or whatnot. I'm going to drive you and then we'll see where you really go. So yeah, trust has not been had there. Smexy also has no hit points, so he's dead. And that's another wall stun. It's a double whammy, as a right. Yeah, he's in trouble too. And he's dead. Hydra, the shield. Sick city, the place, baby. 2-0 kill opening. I like that a lot. Big fight over the third camp, and look at that beauty. Azerite, the first one to be killed, but keep your eye on Blaze too, because he might have died if not for that shield. He was definitely on a bit of a timer there with the damage over time, and that was nicely done. So, now with the top side getting attacked, Hydra is already starting to move in, in position. Shrine is getting announced, and therefore in another 15 seconds we're going to have the first objective being fought over. So there's that. <laughs> he stupid goat. <laughs> Sound like rabbits or something, like I don't know. I'm not quite sure there's a goat. Anyways, like some of the sound effects in the game are always like making me crack up. I'm probably the only one that finds that funny and it's okay, but still. Either way, 13 stacks already on the multi-shot setup, so there's that. We got a couple of stacks together for Mediv. Didn't he have more? Did he die? No, he's at 13. What did I mistake it for? I could have sworn that he had like 17 earlier. Must have slipped and mistaken someone else's stacks for his. Either way, nine stacks for now. And, well, we'll be oh careful. The problem, of course, for the red team is that once that they have the level 10, they are going to have an incredibly dominant hero in the form of Malthael, supported by two supports that can both ult him. But until then, it's a bit more difficult to uh, make any big plays with all of this. Yeah, Junkrat is already at the bottom of the map for that very reason, and as you can see, Team Soundless is locking in the objective. Another reason why you might not want to fight too early against this in a full-on 5 versus 5 that is drawn out is, of course, Vala. The more she can stack for free in the earlier stage of the game, the harder your late game is going to be. And Nano P is at it. I mean, he is out there. He wants those stacks. He's at 22. That's 88 extra damage that he has on it already. It didn't really do a whole lot of work with the first objective, though. I mean, that's not even the wall destroyed. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is... I'm not going to get a medal for that. 
junk red kill. That, on the other hand, was a kind of sexy. No, but, uh, may well, it's Blizzard, so you're gonna get a participation trophy at least. But not taking the wall down when you have the first objective. Yeah, not that great. Either way, 16 stacks for Medivh on the level 1. We're gonna keep our eye on Farland. Let us see if he can complete it. But also 25 stacks now for Vala. So the damage is slowly coming together. But at the end of the day, what all of us are waiting for is the level 10 for Chili Mountain to see if the synergy that they built up through the previous series and also the combo that they drafted for this map is gonna work out for them. That's kinda important. Now, we already have some decent damage for Vala, of course, with the 14,000. And in the meantime, Hydra is the one who's still trying to match Marthale. Of course, the two of them are just going to continue to push the mid in the top lane, trying to get all of the experience here. Another hit is already coming in. And, well, let's see what they can do. Yeah, all the way up at the top, there's the next little play here. Mwah. Level 10, I mean, it's a little bit early for Soundless. It's not a big lead. I don't think they can make a play around it. There's nothing on the map that they could fight for. You can try to maybe push one of the lanes a little bit. We got a ley line into Apocalypse, obviously, with the Diablo and Medivh set up. Vala has gone into Strafe here. Yeah, so far, after the, re after the rework of Vala, honestly, every single Vala that we've seen in the competitive has gone for Rain of Vengeance. It's just that the utility of a good stun is insanely important, but Strafe is, of course, just... Oof. Strafe can be amazing right now, so there's that. But if you want to have that extra stun utility, especially in choke points, that is kind of nice as well. We've seen a lot of good moves with it, and they are putting pressure on the Gia. Portal is being set up too. I, I like this move that Gia went for immediately with Junker to make sure that Vala can't get out for free. But of course, Medivh is circumventing that play. Uh, another setup against the Ice Cream. You know what? He might fall. Yeah, now that Wubi is coming in too, he has a problem. And that is perfect control on the portal. It's one of the most important things, and I always talk about it when Medif is picked. You want to have portal control. Junkrat is oftentimes banned by the team that wants to pick Medif because his mine is excellent to put people... Just to push him away from the portal. And it's exactly what we just saw. So, the mine was there... So Ice Cream, he saw on his Diablo immediately, hey, there's a portal right now set up, if I can get to it, I'm safe, and Junkrat just denied that play completely. And that's one of the reasons why he gets played so much against Medivh. Now there's other heroes that you can also use, Malfurion is one, you can simply root the portal, anybody that wants to move in it or out of it is gonna be in trouble, potentially. So there's a lot of things that you can do, but Junkrat is the best. Divine Shield is there, and it's time for the boost, baby! The Ley Line to counteract it! I love it! Good job! Maybe not quite able to get the Ley Line into Apoch, but that was a pretty solid setup to counter at least the Divine Shield for the time being. And it leads to a kill against Mexi. That's kill number four for Team Soundless. They are falling behind on the objective though, but Vala is also still alive, and she already has 34 stacks, and she is stacking even further. Coming straight into the middle, and they are bullying Wubi. Wubi is getting bullied hard. That's another two kills for Team Soundless, and oh boy, is the blue team on a roll right now. They are crushing. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. I was a little bit afraid that they would struggle against the setup of Chili Mountain, but right now they are looking freaking fantastic here. 36 stacks already uh, for, for Vala. And, yep, Medivh is sitting at 20. Followed up with a little bit of a slower stacking process. But again, as long as it doesn't die, it's fine. Look at the little setup here against the camp. So they're taking this one too. The fountain has already been taken down in the mid lane, so that's not going to be a problem. They also get the level 13, thanks to that little push. The bait over the wall has already happened on the other hand, so they're again not getting too much out of this uh, Punisher. But it's also one of the earlier ones. We have Blaze at the top, he needed to go there to defend. As long as they can drop the wall a little bit further, it's already kind of neat. Ooh, but there's again the play. And he can't get... Yeah, there he is. Goes to the portal, gets nearly stunned, Leyline, Apoch, both out, double stun, the kill, Riptire in the back. Oh, and they go for Diablo, but it's again Medivh, and he's ready for it. And here comes Blaze with a stun. Jesus, every time Jilly Mountain is coming through, Soundless is ready for it. Gotta love it. That was clutch, but they got the kill. Here, another look at it. 
So Diablo, he's so close to dying, and then he just turns it around, and they get the kill against Cassia. Six kills, 2-1 at this point, and Diablo lived through all of it. Farlander just beasted on Medivh, keeping everybody alive. Portals always set up to save them. Sometimes maybe a bit off on the portal placement here to make it just absolutely perfect, but we're really nitpicking. I mean, really nitpicking. So, good stuff. I mean, especially since he's sitting in a situation where he is always making sure that he has perfect... I mean, he, ha he has a really good oversight of the fight. He always knows where he's needed most, and that helps. Quest on level 4 for Malthel is about to be completed. Cassia is also stacking. Pretty okay. Nothing crazy. 10 and a half minutes in, 39 stacks. It's not insane, but it's decent. Now that wall's done. Oh, and oh, oh, gee. Oh, oh. Oh, good move. Does the ice cream have the cooldown back? Nope. And Medivh. Medivh is going to be bad next game. <laughs> Medivh is going to be banned. Banned or picked away. Mark my words. There's no way they're going to let this through again. Not in a setup like this. Six kills to one. More than a level ahead. Vala is nearly at 50 extra stacks, which would give her uh, 200 extra damage. And they are just playing such a great game right now. Full control, good coordination. Soundless has been practicing for this. 37,000 damage for Vala. Marthel, to be fair, has also a pretty significant hero damage amount. But Medivh is just double checking what's happening here the entire time. Flying around and getting the info over. Smacks even the money pick. GR on a money pick. You love to see it. Obligatory money pick comment, obviously. But again... Smexy has been playing, he plays the money pick. Wooby is playing, plays the money pick. I mean, again, do I have to say more? The best players in the game use the money pick. Coincidence? I don't think so. Well, either way. Actually, Wooby isn't using the money pick. Traitor! Nah, he wants to go for Skinnergy. I, I can understand. Maybe the account doesn't have it. He's, he's gonna buy it soon. He used it yesterday. Or the last time. Six kills to one. Level 16 is ready. It's a shitty situation for Chili Mountain. It's really a shitty situation to be in right now. You want to fight for the Punisher. You have an entire level that you have to catch up on. So how do you do it? We got the cooldown reduction through punishment on level 16 for Vala. And that alone is already making the situation even worse. Because cooldown reduction is always kind of nice. And if Vala can stack and then get the reduced cooldown, this is even better. By now, they're already falling away from the objective. They know that they can't take it. By the way, also on 60 now, the Glyph of Faith. Again, Gia gets attacked. Strafe the damage, and Gia saves himself. Rip tires out. Nano B, the bubble. Anduin. Anduin. Oh my god. Shamzik, you little monster, you. They try to go for Farlander. Whoopi wants to deny the stacks, but he dies. Oh my god. Anduin comes in the holy word of salvation. Anduin is not impressed. He looked at this fight like, Don't worry guys. I got all the words. I got the best words. Everybody says so. Salvation. Fantastic. Fantastic performance by Orange Anduin. And yeah, that was a perfect ult. I mean, they really wanted Vala, didn't they? They switched the target midway through and tried to get at least Medivh to deny the stacks. He's sitting at 30, so that's good. But holy hell. That was some seriously nice plays from not only Medivh, but also Ando, and they kept everybody alive. There are seven kills to one. They turned it around, took Wubi down. In the meantime, Blaze wasn't even there. He took the Punisher at the top. You gotta love it. I mean, I hope that the series is getting four or five games at least, but kudos to Team Soundless. They are doing great. They're doing absolutely great here. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. How does Chili Mountain react now, though? It's a tough game, but they have at least level 16. So they have level 16 now. That helps them a lot. High level fight. Big talents are also coming in. Benediction being one of them. But they gotta defend first. And the top lane is getting attacked hard. Uh, but they let it slide after the wall. The Punishers haven't really been that impactful for them. Wubi. Can they support him here? Technically they could. There's the stun. And Vala is at 59 stacks. Divine shield! The ley line though. Uh oh. Team, we have a problem. Houston! Houston! Uh, rip tire! They, can they blow them up? And win is ready again. And Vala is just stacking, but this time Malthel is ready for it. This time Malthel, they get Blaze. 
That was a nice sleep dart. And the kill against him! No! Not like this! Four kills to zero. What an amazing chase. And it is going to be the five-man team wipe. Medivh lost all of his stacks. He was at how much? 35? 35 at that point? I mean, damn. So, yeah. He's down. And that's a kill. Ah! Chili Mountain back to business. You can't count them out. I apologize. I apologize. Big apology to Chili Mountain. I didn't believe in them. No trust. No trust. Okay, so... Seven kills to six. Leading experience now for Chili Mountain because they got the full five-man wipe. And, of course, late-game kills against heroes just give you more XP. I mean, take a look at it yourself. They've taken the lead on uh, the hero experience right now. And they're also doing better on the minion experience. But, yeah, that was a big one. Vala, in the meantime, still stacking as best she can. Again, late game will be important, potentially. And the one thing that you can criticize Team Sounders for is that they did not capitalize on Punishers a lot. They got three Punishers now, and all they took down is a four. That's definitely not great. So, yeah, you need to do more on this. But either way, we have four now, level 19 and a half, so Chili Mountain is a bit ahead. Might lead to them getting the first Punisher if they get the level 20. If it spawns soon, then they might just be able to grab that. But Soundless also has level 19 by now. They got Blaze at the bottom. The lanes are pushing against them a bit. Another wave is coming in bot sides. So that's good for them. And so they might just be able to also get to level 20. Honestly, they should. But they have to be very, very careful now that the Storm Talons are about to be ready for the red team. Thankfully, they got Medivh who can just simply sniff all of this out. It's not really a big problem for him. 30 seconds to soak roughly half a level. Maybe you gotta give the opponent a bit of a lead, but there's that. Redemption is in. And also the nano infusion. Marcel still waiting it out a little bit. I mean, normally it's no one can stop death. Very, very, very rarely do we see anything else. And I don't think this game is going to be any different. But yeah, they're already in position at the bottom of the map. They want that lead. And top side and in the middle, they're all looking at XP right now. This is the move. Okay, so where's the 20? Are they just trying to push for keep and force them back? They could do this. And Mediv, yeah, he goes for the upgraded ley line. And win in the meantime with the sensor. Okay. <laughs> sensor on Anduin, and they go for the keep indeed. And of course, the strafe upgrade for her the death siphon. Yeah, they take the Punisher at the bottom, they sacrifice the keep. Keep gets sacrificed. And now the Punisher will be taken 100%. And they're chasing Farlander again. Now he doesn't have any stacks to speak of. But he needs to make sure that he doesn't die there. Or it's going to be a 5 versus 4. So all of them. Ooh. They're not even heading back. They're just trying to go for the sneaky kill. Psh, don't tell him. Don't say anything. But Gia. Nah. He's good enough. I don't really know why he went also for the. I mean. They didn't know where he was. So he was hoping that he was just on the other side. It was actually a nice play. A risky one, but a nice one too. Didn't have any vision on Junkrat, just saw the grenade and said like, okay, maybe he's here, maybe I can get him. But now it's all about the bot lane push. There's a camp in the middle that they should take care of, but Vala can do that pretty easily. Has 67 stacks by now, that's a fair amount of damage as you can tell. But this is going to be the important one. They keep taking at the top. Chili Mountain sacrificed it. And now here's the play. Can they go maybe even for the game? They won't keep, but game would be great too. Hydra is low, holds the bunker back for as long as he possibly can, and they turn it on Cassian. That's a kill. Leyline into APOC. Not really the best timing, but it zones them away for a second, and they gotta get the hell out of there. So Ice Cream charging onto the catapult in an attempt. First of all, to keep it away from the uh, from the key, but more importantly, because he was hoping that he can connect with one of the heroes and take it down too. That didn't really work for them. But yeah, Vala, they take down the Punisher. And that was a solid defense. This is about as good as it gets. You are able to take the kill. Cassia is down. And now they're looking at a situation in which Vala has 70 stacks by now. Solid damage on her. 67 stacks for Cassia. Not too bad either. Let's take a look at the numbers again. Medivh is not going to complete his quest in this game. 
very unlikely to happen. That would have to be a very long game. But yeah, this is getting spicy now. The keep at the top is down. And they couldn't take the one at the bot lane because of the kill. 63,000 damage for Vala. 68,000 damage for Malthael. It looked for a long time like it would be a very easy game for Team Soundless to win. But right now, they are again in the driver's seat. But Chili Mountain has a much more realistic chance to turn it around than they had four or five minutes ago. And Malthael is, of course, the linchpin here. We have to keep our eye on him. Divine Shield is still ready. And on top of that, we got the Nano Infusion. As expected... Ooh, Final Curtain. Yeah, so much for that. Final Curtain as is level 20. Apparently someone can stop death today. <laughs> and Medivh is... Medivh is just like... Honestly, this is a legal map hack. Medivh is just cheating. We all knew it. Blizzard even told us in a talent. Not that we didn't need to be told. But... Yeah, Medivh is just... He's just cheating. I hate that bird, seriously. Is there anything more annoying than when you're playing a game and Medivh is already just hovering above you? It's just like, ugh. Can someone snipe this guy? You have a sniper on your team that is too dumb to hit a bird. Just saying, alright? Like, does that make any sense? Camp at the bot lane, this is how we started. If they go into another fight there and lose, it would be kind of hilarious. It's how the game started and it's how the game ends. So, yeah. Everybody is just playing it super slow and wait for the next objective. Which opens up opportunities like this one, where you can get structures for free! Those are the best ones. The ones that you get for free. Four down. And another one in the middle of the map that is, of course, ripe for the taking. If you can get there. And the red team is gonna draw the line here, I suppose. Okay. Shrines get activated. Guys, this is the big one. We're 22 minutes in. Uh, should try and deal with that, but they're already taking the camp. If Vala can get over and just... What's their siege damage by now? 166,000. Considering that she was not on the offlane, Blaze was. That is nasty. Uh, she's murdering now. One single multi-shot would already be very, very nice against the top. But either way, there's a few more hits and look how has Max's hit points just disappear as he's being hit. Nano P is playing around Hatred, he's playing around his cooldown reduction, but he's also going to be the prime target for them, of course. Yeah, Maltel gets attacked again. Another quick hit, Final Curtain is in, good damage again, and another stack for Vala. 17 stacks to 9, and so Ice Cream is of course suffering the consequences of going up against Maltel too. Leyline is still an option. Top lane getting pressured by a camp. Bot lane getting pressured by a camp as well. So time is working against Chili Mountain now. They gotta hurry a little bit. They are ahead on the objective, but there we go. They go for Malthael, and the Divine Shield is there. The bunker is there as well. Divine Shield is in. Wubi is losing the shield. There's the final curtain. They're moving in. They're trying for the kill, and Medivh gets blown up by Malthael. He's dead. And win with a word salad once more, but that's a Punisher, and it's gonna march through the mid lane. Another attempt by Chili Mountain to turn the game around. The last one didn't work for them. This one, on the other hand, might be a bit more successful. Big push at the top. Two catapults are in. Bottom of the map, not so much. But it's a five versus four. Well, scratch that. Five versus three. No, they say Hydra. They save Hydra. The core is under attack. Catapults 23 minutes into the game. They do a lot of damage. Look at the shield. Shield is disappearing. The core is going to suffer damage. Smexy gets attacked. Redemption was still up. But the keep is down. The core gets attacked. It's a triple catapult. The keep attacks it. 57%. They put everything onto this move. This is the play. This is the play. But they're down to 40% on the core. Junkman had to go back and save it. And that's a kill against Blaze. A kill against Diablo. But they also lose Uther again. And Nano P is still alive. <laughs> 86 stacks for him now. And Azerite gets attacked, but he's turning it around, or at least trying to. 72% on the core, and the Punisher is still alive. The Epoch, and that's the 
dead of Malthael. Malthael is dead. John Grant is back to action. The ley line hits too. What is this fight? What is this game? Holy shit. Stacks are kicking in all over the place. Azerite is sitting at 93 on Cassia. 100,000 damage nearly for Malthael. We got 96,000 for Vala. The core at 37%, 40% on the other side. This is insane. Sick city, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we got two heroes that are about to join the six digit club. This is just amazing. What a first game. This is game number one. This is just game number one. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a full-on dream team. Okay, 11 kills to 9. We're, we're, by the way, we're 25 minutes in. Both are going to wait for the next Punisher, very likely. And we're already at level 24 any second now. It's a trap! Ah, they got Medivh set up here. He knows when they're moving down. Yeah, they're not falling for that bait, are they? Vala alone on the map this deep. Nobody is that dumb. Nobody is that dumb to move there and think like, no, oh, she's going to be all alone. <laughs> Let's go one-on-one -on, -one on her. Uh, she's sitting at 87 stacks now. Medivh died again, so he's back to three. Boy, what a setup. The next one is also spawning at the bottom of the map, by the way. This is really, really good for Soundless. It's the top lane where the keep is down and where they haven't even taken the fort. So this is going to get attacked again. And as the game continues, the scaling of the catapults is, of course, going to get worse. So this is a really big problem. That might even be ending the game. Mid lane? Yeah, it's annoying too. But from the, from the bottom of the map, you can easily just move into the middle, get an NOP to just drop another multi-shot and take the wave down. But if they don't... Pro I I don't know why they take this now. I would time that. If they can just delay that and pick that later, that would already work. But, yep. That top lane is going to be a massive problem. And they need to push it back. The problem for them is really they have Medivh against them. If that wasn't a Medivh uh, setup that Soundless is playing, they would just simply try to play around Vision. Maybe even go for the core. But they can't do that. Because Falender sees everything. So now they push the top lane out a little bit further. Get a few more stacks for Vala. And the objective is up at the bottom. Yep, they can make the play now. And as the, the longer the bottom fight lasts, the better for Soundless. They want catapults in. And Soundless is even moving in to take another wave down. Take this one down too. Which gives, of course, the opening setup for Soundless on the shrine. And yep. Catapult is going to be taken down by the final curtain over here. All right. But here we go. This is the big one, boys. This is the big one. This is for all the marbles. The game likely going to end here. And it starts nearly with a kill. Oh, my God. They just kept him alive. Bunker gets blown away. And the Nano Boost Divine Shield. Strafe got popped out. Everything. But we got Leyline. We got Apoc still up. Divine Shield also ready. All right. Here comes the uh, setup. Only two. And they mess up the timing. Not really working for them here. Bought him a bit of time. Riptire. Diablo under pressure. But he gets zipped out by Anduin. Great place by Shamzig. Anduin super useful for them right now. Top lane, not a problem for the time being at least. But there's the Divine Shield on Malthael. And they're trying for Smexy. He had no hit points, but he survives. Redemption is still up. Blaze is down. Chilly Mountain. Chilly Mountain. Uther dies, but again he has redemption. That's a huge win for Chili Mountain here. But the blue team isn't giving up just yet. The Punisher is taken. And now they kind of have to go for core. There's the heals. But Anduin is down. You made daddy proud, boy. So, yeah, don't worry about it. Diablo is dead too. And that is going to be a game, very likely. Yeah, 37% on the core against 40. They killed everyone with the exception of Farlander and Malfuria. And he's not going to solo the core here. I'm sorry. He's not going to even be able to get the catapults there. Someone else is going to head back. It's Mexi. The two of them are doing the job quite nicely. And, of course, the core on the other side of the map is going down now. 
111 stacks for Cassia, 104 for Vala. This is game number one, everybody. Chili Mountain is taking the lead in the final best of five of the Masters Clash playoffs. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Sky Temple, map number two, and as it stands, Chili Mountain is on their way to Paris. At least they took the first step, so they might be able to do a bit more here, but they turned the game around, so really, really nice comeback on the first map. They were in so much trouble. And again, if you want to criticize Soundless, then the one thing that you can point out is that they did not do enough with the objectives that they took. I mean, you don't need to get an objective and immediately, like, take all the forts down. That's not what we're really talking about here. But three objectives, and all you can really do is take a single fort. Not really the best ratio. But anyways, we're heading into game number two right now. Chili Mountain has so far done a great job, and they also chose the map. So we are on Sky Temple. We have Stukov. We got also bans on Zaratul. And Cassia. And no stacking anymore. What did she end up with? 111? So, yeah. It wasn't only Vala that got a really nice damage output towards the end. Malthael, of course, was just out of this world, but I mean, that was a given. He's literally supported with ults from two supports. But uh, Cassia also did a great job there. The Lucio first pick for Shamsik, so Lucio gets taken immediately. Leaving, by the way, Uther also open again. So if they want to play that Uther style once more, they can. And, well, let's see. There's a birdie. Told you. Sky Temple. Ah, big map, and we're gonna see the globals again. And Diablo for Gia. Gia is playing a mean Diablo. He did so in the previous series. Now Diablo is rising in, in uh, priority, and I like it. It's honestly very fun to watch a good Diablo player. He's definitely one of the more interesting tanks to watch. Now, tanks in general can make a lot of the plays, but I would say that Diablo is just, like, visually one of the best. Yeah! Abatha! Woo! The slug is in! Okay! Nice. Ah, Abatha had a Lucio. The snail. By the way, snails taste a little bit like mussels, right? I think it's, at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same thing. Well, yeah, last time, talking about Paris, talking about the French, last time that I was in Paris, we had some really, really nice nails. Ooh. Some of that stuff tastes really amazing. But at the end of the day, it reminds me a little bit of just like seafood in general, and if you have mussels there, so yeah, I don't know. Cooked Abatha. That's the dream. Burn the Slugger. Okay, so Sylvanas gets banned out. And last ban of the series. What do you get rid of? Whoopi, Smexy. Uh, Dehaka. You already have false set against you. Don't want the, don't want the double the double global. So there's that. Good for them. I mean, this is the map where Fnatic back in the days played triple global. Just saying. Don't think we would necessarily see it in the exact same fashion, but better safe than sorry. Ban Dehaka out. Wubi is great on that hero too. And you can't get macroed too hard, so there's that. Also, it makes Abyssal is a little bit safer. But there's this Maxi Uther again, and Azerite is playing, uh, playing Jimmy for this one. So, yep, yeah, there we go. Uh -huh. Last two picks. What is Abby going to support? If it was another team, I would say, like, that's an Illidan pick. But we're not there yet. This isn't Zelia that is playing in this game. What are you going to do with Abyssa? Samuro cheese, Greymane, Greymane it is. I love how Greymane is back a little bit, just a little bit in the Western scene now, after the players all watched the Korean tournament where Greymane was one of the most picked heroes. Everybody was like, eh, maybe we should give him another chance. So now you can go for the Greymane copy. Yeah, the copy. This is North America, everyone. We're not going to see Monty. Monstrosity won't be played here. So double Greymane as an option. Hogger. Double Hogger is also annoying as hell. So. And ETC! Okay, side lane ETC. Reminds me of HGC, the Heroes Gaming Community. Back in the days, ETC first pick. Side lane ETC, main tank ETC, you could play it all. Game number two, let's go! We got Sky Temple coming up, and let's find out if Soundless can take a point 
or if it's going to be a 2-0 lead for Chili Mountain. Soundless against Chili Mountain, map number two. Please let it be as good as map number one. On the left side, we got Hydra on Abatha, Shamsig on Lucio, Sir Ice Cream, still the best game name ever. On Garrosh, we got Ninopi on Greymane and Falander on Hogger. On the right side of the map, it's Chili Mountain with Azerite on Reyna, Mac on Falstead, G on Diablo, Wubi on ETC, the side lane ETC, very likely also for the global. If you can't play the Haka for the global, you just go for ETC and you pick stage dive. And Smexy is a playing Uther, so let's go. I mean, it's literally what they're gonna do. They're literally gonna use ETC as a pseudo global with a stage dive. Now, on level one, we actually get the Envenomed Nest, so we're gonna keep an eye on the Abathur build and see how far he goes into the Toxic Nest setup. But outside of that, we now got our block party. Uh, and we also got the the body check right there. Okay. So. I like that we have the slug. At least one game with Abatha. So that's awesome. And off we go. Nano P already gets a little bit of help. Abatha has to, of course, also try to... Uh, I mean, for Hydra, it's kind of important that he is attempting to body soak. And this is going to made, be made very hard. Considering that you have not only falsehood against you, but also ETC. And there's the money pick again. You see, I told you, he just went for the synergy with Malthiel, but will be immediately back on the money pick. So yeah, for all the haters that in the last game, immediately said like, oh, <laughs> Carlos says he writes the best spot in the game, but he doesn't. There it is, all right? Ha! Thank you, Wubi. Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty. They're styling on them already. Yeah, but... Greyman is, of course, great on the camps, especially when he has the support of Abathur and Lucio. Uh, and everybody, I mean, again, it's a little bit of an easier setup right now. Everybody in the early game is just going to see if they can get some camps, get some pressure. If you can, of course, take some structures down already, that would be great. And one team still has their siege giant camp up that they could go for. Top side, nobody's really pushing in, so Wubi is just pinned down for now. Level 4 talents are kicking in. Later on, Abathur can side soak with Buddy or Symbiote. Both is fine. Indomitable is in, and he is committing more to it. He goes for the prolific dispersal as well. Can slow the rotations down. Can be very, very annoying with that. Boss plays are also going to be. I mean, honestly, if you're looking at the lineup right now, I'd say that whenever it comes to a big boss battle, it's the red team that always has the upper hand because they have Falset for the Gust, they have ETC that can create some space. Diablo, no matter if he goes Apocalypse or Lightning Breath, can do a lot. And boss fights are oftentimes what this map comes down to. And uh, that might be a problem. Yeah, That's also a problem for Marker. Not a big enough problem, though, to take him down. But yeah, as I already said, it's going to be really an issue. Often, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird map, because oftentimes you end up in a situation where a team feels that they need to make a play. They're behind, the opponent is about to hit level 20, for example. Or already, uh, yeah, it's about to, to hit level 20, so what do you do? You YOLO into a boss battle and you force them to fight. I'm talking about forcing people to fight, they're forcing Smexy also into a 1v3, and that doesn't go well for him. But yeah, if you end up in that situation and you force someone to fight there, then you can uh, try and gamble a little bit. But boss battles are going to be super important. Oh my god, really? 33 hit points? Damn. I mean, they got one kill, but that still was close. And of course, the opposite is true as well. If a team hits level 20, then they are the ones who would like to go for boss because they would love to fight the opponent. And if you then have full-on control over the location, makes it so much easier. We had a couple of bosses already stolen during the playoffs, and this combo that Chili Mountain is using is very, very good for that. So level 7 talents are kicking in. Uh, it's the usual suspect. So far, nothing too crazy. We already got the Hand of Protection now in. Abathur is going for Mule, one of the best maps to use Mule, since the objective is directly attacking structures, and he's already dropping it in the middle of the map to slow this onslaught down a bit. Greyman has, in the meantime, headed straight into the Wizen Duelist. And there's the kill against Greymane. Alright, so it's not only the blue team that can get kills here. Red team is doing a decent job as well. Maka is using his secret weapon on level 7 to apply additional pressure 
to the structures. I mean, again, structures is the best setup where you can get max value out of the secret weapon pick. Obviously, before the rework, when Boomerang was still the stand, that you would never really go for that. That talent was such a noob trap, it was crazy compared to Boomerang. But now that that's baseline, you can use that and really get some value out of it. Especially if you're uh, side laning and trying to get the pressure there. They're getting in a little bit deep for that Hogger kill and Gia might pay the price because he's now pinned behind the wall. And there's even more heroes now coming. Oh, nice play by Booby. That was great. Created the space for them to maybe escape here. But they're still in trouble. Both of them. Diablo is down and so is ETC. Moo. The cow is dead and Azerite is also the annihilator. That's three kills. Four to one. Team Soundless. Apparently someone is a bit angry after map number one, aren't they? Look at this. Initially, Wubi creating some space and nearly allowing Diablo to survive all of this. But then again, they get not only one kill, but they get both of those frontliners. So now they have the lead and experience again. Falset has at least pressured the bot lane a bit, but the top four has been taken out. So the structural advantage goes definitely to the blue team. Not even a question. And by now... Got Greyman back on his main job. Taking camps down. Oh yeah. Shockwave for Hogger. Here's the ultimate evolution. We got the high five. Warlord's challenge. And talking about Hogger, he's dead. <laughs> and so Ice Cream is very likely gonna die too. But he wants Maka. He's like, I'm a g Ah, the Divine Shield. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Smexy. He would have killed Falstead. With the help of Abertha, that would have been a dead birdie. Back in the KFC basket. Eh, uh, bucket. So now we got four kills to three, and they're going for the boss. Yeah, Abertha, he has used his copy. So they want to contest this. Double Grey main. But, yeah, Gust is not. But you have the stage dive, of course, to control the point. You have ETC to control the point. And I think we're going to see here how strong this setup is on the boss, even without Gust. There's the slide. Utha down though. Uh oh. Uh oh. Team. Team. One down. Two down. Do they get more? They're trying. But the boss is taken. ETC is also dead. They lost two. Greymane is down. Gia. And he's dead as well. Four heroes. They lost four heroes for this. Initially, it started off like this. So the big fight, the slide in. Hoga trying to push him back. And then, of course, the first few heroes are dying. But they control the boss and they lock it in. So at least they got the boss, but they lost quite a lot of heroes. Now, Hoga is also dead, so that's a bit of an issue. But then again, the fight continues at the bottom of the map too, as so Ice Cube is facing off against Wubi. Abatha, then he's a bit of a sneak and he doesn't respect the 1v1. Neither do Chili Mountain, so they go in. Look at the body block. That's a Warcraft 3 surround right there. So Ice Cube is like, the fuck? Yeah, if you lose the push battle against Uther, then something is clearly wrong. We need some kind of mechanic that depending on how strong your character is supposed to be, you can either push out of the way or not. But that's two kills. So what looked like a bit of a disaster since they lost multiple heroes, four in total in the last fight, turned around again. Eight kills to six now. And the bottom temple is taken. So more of the structures on the blue team side are being removed. Not only did they lose the bottom fort, but they also just lost the one in the middle. That was a nice back and forth. I mean, it's blow for blow. Okay, they're gonna try and s take the camp at the top as well. And it is a bit crazy now. Even experience nearly. But yeah, blow for blow. One team gets four kills, the other team turns around, gets an isolation kill, follows up with a second, claims the objective. And now you would still give Chili Mountain the advantage simply because of the fact that they are looking better in structures. Attempted invade. Lucio, of course, speeding all of this up. They have good utility. They had Midi for the last one. Now they got Lucio, but they're about to lose Ice Cream. Yeah, Ice Cream is down. And that's a Hogger kill. Oh, yeah. That is two down right as it starts. And here's the stage dive. Oh, Shamsik. Nah, he doesn't survive. Some neat plays from him, but he doesn't make it. And now Nano P. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro, but you are not going to make it either. <laughs> The dog gets bullied. That is going to take down the top four. Only the slugger is still alive. Guys, this is crazy. Right now, the red team is in an absolute roll. Ten kills to eight. I mean, look at these kills. They take Garrosh down, Hogger down, and then they pressure on. Can take the bottom lane nearly apart. 
the gates there. Yep, they're getting it. Both gate and tower destroyed. And this is the map where every single structure that you can take down has a huge impact. Simply because, I mean, again, the objective attacks the structures directly. So the more structures you remove by simply going for a fight and then capitalizing on it, the better for you. You just have to trade evenly with your opponent after that and you're going to win the game. And that's exactly the position where Chile Mountain is at right now. If they trade evenly structures with a blue team, they're going to win. They have more structures, more to soak up these, these temple shots. So in the long run, they're going to win the game, which puts all the pressure onto Team Soundless. Team Soundless, they are the ones to have to make some plays, either for structures on the map, for the objective, or simple team fight victories. They need to do something. So they're trying to uh, get a connect on any of these heroes. It doesn't work out. Invading the bot lane a little bit. ETC is at the top. Keep his stage dive in mind. That's why they went for ETC. They want to have the pseudo global. But the fort gets destroyed. And now the attack is hitting the top. And even with Mule. That's going to be damage. And do they attack the bot lane? No. Why would they? Not now. They might look for a target. But they don't have to fight here. Now that they have level 16. They're willing to. But before that, they couldn't care less. But now that they have the talent advantage, they're making their move. But before, they were totally willing to just trade. And here they go, for ice cream again. Shamsik, both incredibly low. The fight is not looking good for the blue team. But some of the heroes on uh, the side of Chili Mountain are also rather low. And Abatha with his copy wanted to get a couple of kills together. Couldn't though. And now that they're taking the bot lane control on the temple, they are going to attack the keep. Now, they won't be able to take it down with these shots, which means that Abatha is going to use the mule to repair it. But it also, of course, at the same time means that he will have to use the mule there. And that takes options away from him. Unless the red team decides that they are really willing to commit to the bot lane right now. Uh, Hoga, there's a lot more shots fired. So this is actually a really nice temple for them to get. That's had way more shots than the one at the bottom. So not only is this fort going to be eliminated, but they're also going to get this one. That trade of temples did not really work out for uh, uh, Chili Mountain after all. Yeah, that did not work out at all. So the bottom fort, to be fair, is still here. He had to move away because they realized that the heroes were rotating topside. But that was a lot more additional shots for uh, Soundless than Chili Mountain thought. They would have been better off just simply trading the temples. Simple as that. But again, that is low. And Abyssa has a 60 now. We got the adrenaline boost in. And the boss is also up. Experience gap isn't that big. An early level 20 can help. But the experience gap isn't that crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of awesome when you have a game where so much rise on it. These guys have been playing for how many weeks? 14 weeks of play. Trying to make it to a position where they can join the top three at an offline event. Offline events are always fun. I mean, there's a lot of prize money on the line here. More than 10,000. But at the same time, it's also just, you know, to meet people, meet the players. Meet the guys that you've been memeing around with for years at this point. And just get together again, have some fun, shoot the shit, play some awesome Heroes of the Storm, enjoy an offline event. So everybody wants to go there. Uh, 8 kills to 10. 18 to 17 and a half. It's not a big gap, as I said. Abatha, yep, there's the mule. Let's go to work, buddy. An ETC side laning. Doesn't even have to push this out necessarily. Yeah, but does. Stage Dive is, of course, there. And always keep an eye on the boss. Every single time. With the Toxic Nest, on the other hand, it's more or less a given that the blue team is have, gonna have some vision. And here comes the birdie. As I said, they have the best boss control. Look at those talents. Of course they do. So how is the blue team playing around this? I talked about this earlier. But now we're seeing it most likely once again. The fight is there. There's the gust. They're already dodging out on it at least a little bit with the Indomitable. But the boss gets taken. Gia dies for a good cause. So does Maxi. Look, look at that ragdoll. Diablo. Uh, Whoopi, can they take him down too? They're actually winning this fight heavily. Yeah, that's a kill on Jimmy. And they're getting Whoopi. For the second time. The red team takes the boss, but they're losing heroes. The question is just how many. Nice wall stun. 
beautiful, beautiful play by Gia. Solid. And they go for another kill. Garrosh dies as well. Okay, as they defend, take another look at that kill. Take a look at how Gia made that happen. So the entire fight at the beginning, all of this happens, and then BAM! He switches targets, sees the opening, takes down Lucio, and of course, after that, they are able to take Ar <coughs> take Garrosh too, and the keep has not fallen. The keep hasn't fallen, and they have the mule to repair it. These plays might lose Chili Mountain the game. Now they are closing in on level 20. And they are getting the objective. So they're still heavily ahead in structures. That hasn't changed. But this at the bottom is going to be muled up. They are still in the lead. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say they aren't. But they are losing a little bit of the ground that they had. They really want that keep though. They really want the keep. And Garrosh is still dead. And that is a staggered death against Hoga. Doesn't get much better than that. Will be even uh, ulted in. To make sure that they're not only getting the key, but also that they can cut off Hogger's path of retreat just in case that he moves down to the bottom. And another stun. Yeah, the, the copy on Abathur is immediately down. And that's a level 20. First keep down. Abathur is at least helping to destroy the fort at the bottom of the map as he's supporting the siege giant. But of course there's another one up for grabs and that's in the middle. And the situation is just getting worse and worse and worse for Team Soundless as they're losing all the structures with the exception of the top keep. And even their camp gets taken! That they can use now to push through that top lane. Now level 20 is at least ready. So they are not really too keen on doing that. Hive Mind is in. The Summer Anthem. And the No Control. Okay. Nasty stuff. For the blue team, this is a nightmare. Catapults are going to push their lanes. Double objective coming up. And they are in a spot where they pretty much can only come back if they win some team fights big time. Which they have. But always around the boss and they every single time lost the boss. And that's awesome at the beginning when you can take it easily down. But it's a lot more tricky later on in the game when the boss just scaled hard and does tons of work. And the blue team can't trade. Again, it's not enough to take the top temple and simply sacrifice the one at the bottom. It's all about vision right now. It's all about vision at this point. Yeah, and as you can see here on the vision pack, check the minimap out a little bit. They don't really know where they are. Falstead is now getting a little bit more ballsy because he knows that everybody is at the top. A lot of the blue team players have now shown themselves. So Falstead has the opportunity to go for the temple. And they're even taking a couple of the shots at the top if they can maintain that position. And there's a camp pushing in. Yeah, so they get two shots fired. Three. It's not a whole lot. But every single shot counts as Marke has the bot lane right now. And that wall is already gone. Hydra. Uh, he has to help here a little bit. Double catapult. Siege giants. They can't trade. I, again, it's a shitty position for them to be in. I understand. But they cannot trade. The keep is down if they do. And then the core gets attacked directly. And they are not even getting the keep in the middle. That's the bigger problem. Yeah. Now it's the core that gets attacked directly. Boss is up in another 47 seconds. 20 versus 20. Catapults on the core in just a second. They're going to lose some core points. It's not going to be a lot, but they're going to lose some. Yeah, there it is happening already as we speak. They're going to lose way more, but they have Mule. It's still risky because your opponent can come in. Take it down. 67%. Mule is not going to have an uh, easy time healing all of that up. So now it's back down to the boss. And that's exactly what I talked about at the beginning of the game. Oftentimes these come down to boss fights. And this is another example. Now there is of course another play that Chili Mountain can make. They can posture around here. Threaten boss. And then fly the bird up. And get ETC in here. If a wave pushes in. If they get a camp for example. And the wave pushes in. They can get two heroes right away. Onto the core. And start attacking it. That's something that you have to keep in mind. And the blue team is making their move. Again, it's a bit of a Hail Mary. They have to remove it. They have to remove the boss. And what's the first thing that happens? Of course, they go core. 80%. That's an easy one. That's game. That's game right here. It's a bad position for the blue team. Little to do. Catapults. Yep, there's the mighty, there's the mighty gust. The wind tunnel. And they take it. Game number two. 
claimed by Chili Mountain as they lock in the W on Sky Temple. A 2-0 lead over Team Soundless as we are heading into game number three of this series. Battlefield of Eternity, map number three, and this time it was Chili Mountain. Well, Chili Mountain didn't have to do anything, honestly. We immediately had Soundless come in and say, like, guys, we need to pick the map now. We're not going for first pick. We have to win this one. So they went for Battlefield of Eternity, and they must be a bit frustrated. Both of the games, for parts of it at least, looked great for them, but they lost twice now. And that is an 0-2, which means Chili Mountain, all they got to do is win one more map, and they go to Paris. They go to the offline event. And if that happens, especially if it happens with a 3-0, I guarantee you it is going to spark a little bit of a discussion of what's going on there. Because Chili Mountain that is playing right now is a very different Chili Mountain than I played the regular season. Again, a couple of voices already against it. A couple of people in favor of it. It's obviously a bit of a sore point for especially the fans of Team Soundless, but also Team Ash. Who struggled there a bit but yeah if you're watching this on youtube first of all make sure that you hit a thumbs up on this one but you can also drop your personal opinion into the comments what you think should have happened here now again the series isn't over always a chance for a reverse sweep but yeah interested to hear what everybody has to say about that if they like it or not for the viewers obviously it's nice to see Wubi and smexy so i'm not complaining but at the same time, I can understand that fans might be a little bit disappointed or annoyed. Anyways, Vala is being picked right away again. So we talked a little bit about Vala and her priority, but at least here she's going to be played very likely with a multi. Uh, sorry, with an arrow build again. Korea like to go into multi shot a little bit more, even on battlefield. Diablo has the opening. I like again. Ah, I said it last one, but I love that he has the priority here. I really like it. I think that's awesome. So we got Malfurion together with Vala. Hanzo is in. Anduin is in. Yeah, and we had some amazing Anduin in place already. I mean, don't get me wrong, I hate the lore around the character. I think Anduin is a whiny, whiny Backstreet Boy that looks like Nick Carter, and I'm just like, oh, for the Alliance, I want my mommy! But the kit that the hero has, whoo, there's so much good shit that he can do with him. So yeah, Anduin is awesome, at least in that one. Now, again, as we're getting into the bans here, we have Oof that at least banned out this time. So Smexy couldn't get him. Chromie gets banned too. If you got Hanzo with the stun, Diablo with the stun. I mean, technically you can already go Hanzo Arrow into Apocalypse of Dibbles. So that's happening. And our last ban of this map, potentially the series, is... Badum. Rexa! Okay! Rexa is out! Yeah, Rexa is a good pick on the map, and I could definitely see them picking them. But there is Urel. So, no Urel for Wubi. Already know that. Let's have a look at this. Da -da -da -da. That's the main tank. What's the ice cream gonna pick here against the Eagles? They picked the map. I'm still waiting a little bit for that one X-Factor pick, but I don't think we're going to get it. They're going to play Vala and Li Ming here, which are both great against the Immortal. They're also good for damage output. So that's a nice setup, but we're not seeing anything crazy from them. So they just like to play the map. They have a good idea of what they want to play. But still, can they? is that enough to take down Chili Mountain? That's, of course, the big question. Now, Maka and Wubi, those are the last two that have to pick for the red team. And especially Wubi side lane. Is something uh, to uh, keep an eye on. Blaze, okay, that's a lot of stuns, by the way. Sylvanas by Marker. Mind control is an option. Wailing error is an option. Or both offer a certain amount of control, certain type of control. You got Diablo stuns, Apocalypse maybe, Hanzo, Arrow, Blaze. There's a lot of CC there. Normal Furane has Nature's Cure, of course. So, let's see. What's the main tank? And the last pick to bring it together. Stitches! Stitches hook into Malfurion root. I like it. Okay. Can he pull that off? Whew. There's a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of the ice cream. Guys, we're heading into Battlefield of Eternity. Potentially the final map or the beginning of a potential reverse sweep. So, let's go straight in. Team Soundless against Chili Mountain. 
Game number three, Soundless against Chili Mountain. One map is all that the red team needs to go to Paris. Nenopi on Liming, Falenda with the arrow build as expected is playing Vala, Shamzik on Malfurion. We got Hydra on Urel and with level one patchwork creation, standard talent honestly these days. Uh, Stitches gets played by Sir Ice Cream. Mark on Sylvanas, Gia is playing Diablo, we have Smexi on Anduin. Azerite on Hanzo and Wubi is playing Blaze. So it's about the hooks now. Can Sir Ice Cream land those bad boys and wreck them a little bit with that? That's the biggest one. Oh, talking about <laughs> the top lane, by the way, and attacks against heroes. We immediately have a four man setup against Hydra, and he got out of this one. But they had to switch positions up a bit to adjust to the new setup here. So there's the hook, the root, and Anduin is pulling the target back. Anduin was a really smart pick for them. I think they were not necessarily thinking about Stitches. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe they have some insights there. But there's obviously a couple of heroes where Anduin really starts excelling. So, for example, if the team with what they had would have picked Varian, very likely, by the way, with the opening setup on Malfurion, then Anduin is great. If they pick Garrosh, Anduin can be great. If they pick Stitches, you can do the same thing if you are in range. So against all of these heroes, Anduin to just simply keep a target alive is very solid. And that was a fantastic pick for Chili Mountain that is going to create a lot of trouble potentially for Team Soundless. Vala is now with the changed build order or talent order going for the puncturing arrow on the level 1 talent. We're going to get the repeating arrow after that. And of course the stacking here is going to be very important as all of this continues. Sylvanas is down at the bottom of the map. So it seems like that Stitches who connected after all. Up at the top, the camp gets stolen though. So they were able to take both of the camps. Now a kill against Sylvanas is a good start for the blue team. But losing both of the cams, eh, not so much. <laughs> These stupid goats. Meh, meh. And the space goat, the queen of all goats, is dead too. So there it is. The counter kill. Whoopee. And he gets out. And Stitches might have gone a bit too deep. Look at Diablo bullying him completely. And flipping Stitches over like it's no thing. Seriously? Stitches, he has heavy bones. Yeah. Dibbles, he doesn't care. Nope. Easy. Yeah, Stitches is one of those boys that would have to buy two seats on an airplane. There's a repeating arrow, by the way. So now we can go straight into the objective. Only three stacks for the first one. And when on level four, the piercing light. Interesting concept. Anyways, uh, okay. Standard setup, guys. Camp time. You want to make sure that you're capping it so that the lanes are getting pushed against the opponent. Trump for it for Liming, and this is really where the rubber hits the road. Now you need to make your play. Who gets the first objective? Who can make their move here? I like that they already opened up the entire wall, so that's a great move, and Sylvanas, of course, was essential for that. But they still have to win the objective. But the leading experience goes over to Chili Mountain. It's not a small one. It's actually a pretty big one too. If they win the objective as well, I'm a little bit afraid for Soundless. And that is not something that I want to say. I want four maps. I want five maps. I'm not so sure if I'm going to get them though. Halftime show has been given up. That is... Uh, I really don't like what we're seeing here. Exactly the play that we highlighted earlier. The hook against Anduin's trait. Top lane gets pressured. Guys, this is a nightmare. I don't know what Soundless is doing right now, but this isn't working for them. First of all, they lose the wall. Now they're losing hit points on the fort. We're talking objective number one here. And they're losing the objective two. I mean, they're losing on all grounds. There's not a single aspect of this game where they're currently doing well enough. And this is a disaster this early in the game. If later on one of your forts gets pushed by a camp, then hell, so be it. But right now... Losing this early on already, the fort nearly at the top lane, and losing the Immortal with that big of a difference on the hit point pool is a disaster. If that bad boy gets taken, with this many HP remaining over here, 
then they can push the bot lane and take that out. And just look at the rotational play that we're seeing from Chili Mountain. They're trying to go for this too, but Marka might have overstepped a bit too much. Yeah! <laughs> That's a jump, baby! Oh yeah! Hydra had enough of this shit, but the Immortal is still taken. So while they got the kill against Sylvanas, it still leads to this. But yeah, but check Sylvanas out. It was kind of funny how he, of course, was waiting for her to jump on the wave and just jumped on it instead. Look at the timing. Bam! But the situation is still that a massive Immortal is pushing through the bot lane. Both of the teams have their level 7, which also gives us now the Monster Hunter. And even with Sylvanas just now coming back, they will get top lane value if she pushes this. They're also trying to get Hydra. But yeah, that is, even if they don't take the fort here, this is solid value. And instead of going for the fort at the bottom of the map, guess what? They're going for the one at the top. There it is. Trying to take it down. Everybody rotates in. It's going to be a five versus three. Vala is the only one at the bottom of the map and she survives. Now, fair enough. Soundless was able to save both of their forts. But both of them are very, very low. So for now, things are still okay. But boy, are they... I mean, they are really, really, really playing this one on Knife's Edge, aren't they? Serrated Edge is in now. Vala still trying to stack a little bit, but also taking the camp at the same time. And look at Whoopi. Yeah, they want to go for this, don't they? They're invading it. Yeah, here they go. Sylvanas. Bam! The kill against Li Ming. Beautiful, beautiful pincer move by Chili Mountain. They take the fort. They get the kill against Li Ming. Incredibly well done. Now, they need to deal with this, and I'm pretty sure they will. Wubi is already moving back at the top. He's not overstaying here. That's not going to happen. And that's three kills to two. First fort eliminated. The one at the bottom also rather low. Death timers are, of course, not really all that big of a deal yet. So Li Ming is back already. But they are doing such a great job now. Okay, either way, as it stands, we have the next objective coming up soon, TM. And with level 10, yeah, look at this. It's going to be a halftime show victory for Chili Mountain without even having to fight for it. Because they got level 10. And they might even go for the bottom fort if they get level 10 through the minion wave here. They can make that play. If they decide that they don't want to take the halftime show on the objective, but instead just take the fort, there's just absolutely nothing to stop them. There's level 10. By now we got, of course, for Anduin, the light bomb. And, yeah, Welling Arrow, Apocalypse. So, we could also see the Hansa Arrow into Apocalypse, followed by a Wailing Arrow here. They're stealing the camp away, can still take their own. And that's a halftime show win for sure. Oh boy, Soundless, come on, you guys can do it. Give us game number four. It would be kind of amazing if we would get at least a little bit more out of this series. But at this point, it really seems that Chili Mountain is just in absolute control of things. They have the momentum on their side. And they are just working like a well-oiled machine. Game number one was probably the closest bit of the three that we've seen thus far. And to be absolutely honest with you, I really think Sounders should have won it. I think they made a few small mistakes that cost them the game in the end. But I think they had a very, very solid opportunity to take it. Arrow connects with three. There's the APOC. Oh my fucking god. What? What a sexy play. What a clean play. Insta double kill and Hydra is now going to die as well. Unbefucking leaveable. What a beautiful combo. That arrow, the follow up. <laughs> Nano P gets attacked and that's another one. They're, they're going for the five man wipe, aren't they? Of course they are! Five man wipe. What a disaster for Soundless. Check this combo out. Look at it. Look at it. Bam! The triple, the jet propulsion, everything came together here. And they get a full-on five-man wipe. That's a level 13 talent that we're getting now. With a push on the Immortal, nine minutes into the game, the forts are already gone. Unbelievable. What a beautiful combo. Checking the bush, putting Wubi in there. They decide to push it to the front right away. And Soundless have luck, uh, have, I mean, again, good luck with that one. There's the level 13, the talent advantage, the boss, Sylvanas, they have everything. 
They have absolutely everything. The coordination is there. And here's the gate falling slowly but steadily. Pewdiepie is already being used. They're desperately trying to defend their keep. The arrow is out. The apoc comes in again. And this time the combo didn't do anything. Hydra saw it coming. This time they keep him alive. And they're still in danger of losing the keep. As well as they played around the combo this time. The keep is low. The keep is low and it might fall here. They want to go four stitches. And they can't get him. The keep is still in play. But boy did they suffer here. And there, the fight isn't over. Light bomb with the Diablo engaged. There's the stun. Stitch is in trouble. Malfurion in trouble, but Hanzo dies. They're going to get the counter kill, though. Gia is bullying people again. Pushing them into walls all day, every day. Yeah. You, you just know he stuffed kids in their lockers in school. You just know that happened. You're not getting that good at such an OG bully hero without having some real-life practice first. Blaze is down, so finally we're seeing some signs of life here on uh, the side of Soundless. Is it too little too late? That's the question. Is it really too little too late right now? 5 kills to 9. 13 to 14. <sighs> Guys, I don't know. Already the under pressure. Yeah, yeah, you are under pressure. That's definitely true. No kidding, you are under pressure. Tell me more, please. Tell me all about it. Can they bring this back? They're so far behind. They nearly lost the keep. They lost two forts. Can they pull something off right now? Well, there's a hook. There's the setup. And Gia gets out. Yeah, there it is. He dies. Oh, the arrow of death from the other side of the map. The engage with the light bomb. Hydra. But they kill Sylvanas and Shams. It keeps everyone alive. And when it's dead too. Oh, ho, ho, ho. There we go. That's the same team soundless that we know. Yeah, the one that make the ones that make no sound. They're most dangerous ones. We all know that. Especially if you have a dog. Anyways, that was a beautiful kill setup again, and all of a sudden the entire momentum of this uh, map has completely changed. Now the structural position is still the same, but they are now in a spot where they can finally do some work against the Immortal and maybe take the objective here. So, it's so weird. This game started out so well for Chili Mountain, and now they're getting murdered. Yeah, they're getting absolutely murdered here. So, 8 kills, 2-9. What's the damage I'll put on this one? 29,000. For Liming. Same for Sylvanas. Both of them. Ooh. Yeah, but again, it's 5 versus 5. Both of them look under to level 16. Both want level 16 right now. Both have an opening. The problem is that if Chili Mountain wins another team fight, they might even be able to end. That bot keep is so incredibly low. And this arrow comp, it worked once fantastically well. But can they lock it in again? Oh! <laughs> I love that these roots are always there. The trust. Shamsik. But there's the 16. Slightly faster for Chili Mountain. They got it. And that of course also means that Anduin now has his uh, double trade. At the same time, Manticore. Very important. That's going to threaten Diablo a lot. That's a big play potentially. And the Pulverize. Oh my god, no! Smexy, the light bomb, and immediately! And the kill! Li Ming! What a hook! The hook of death! Oh, and the arrow! No! Fully missing. Another big hook, and they kill Hanzo. Three kills? <laughs> What's happening here? What the fuck is happening all of a sudden? Look at this! Look at this! <laughs> what? What? This is getting so nasty. Like how? They got murdered. Guys, they got slapped around. This entire early game was a disaster for them. And now look at this. Look at this. <laughs> this spray game is on point. <laughs> they just want to keep. They just want to keep, and they were waiting until everybody's at the top lane. They're going to get the keep. Minion wave is already out, and there's like, dam, da, -dum, da, -da, -dum, da -dum. And that's the end of the keep. Goodbye.
Keep is down. They sacrifice the fort. Now they can just move back. Hearthstone. And then they're going to defend at the top. So even if the blue team now takes the keep, it's going to be keep on each side. But yeah, that's awesome. What a... Jesus. What a game. What a game. 11 kills to 9. And here we have it. The push to the top. The opening. The opportunity. Of a lifetime. Mom Spaghetti. Let's go, baby. 18 to 17. The keep is it gonna fall? They're trying their best to keep it alive, but nah. I don't think so. No, 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 no. That's gonna go down. Ooh. Okay. Off we go. Keep down on each side. Jesus. <laughs> ah, that's beautiful. 30 stacks now on the baseline for Diablo, so he still needs a few more kills if he wants to keep his hit point pull up. 24 stacks for Vala. Nothing crazy, but it's adding up slowly. Yeah, leading experience for Team Soundless. That's quite something. They had a fantastic season. They're showcasing finally what allowed them to get into the first pos fourth position in the first place. Finally the place here. Yeah, P with some sick, sick plays on Liming too. I mean, he popped off a couple of times now. Now he got also farmed once or twice, but still. Alright. Top side. Camp pressure. And the problem, of course, for Chili Mountain is not that gap in XP uh, now. The problem kicks in when level 20 is on the board. So, since they are level behind, they gotta rethink their position a little bit and think, hey, how, how are we dealing with this now? How can we set something up here? What's the next play for us? Arrow! Oh my fucking god! Are you kidding me? Again? What? What? At least they got the Sylvanas kill, but holy shit! These arrows! I mean, Azerite, can you calm the fuck down just for a moment? <laughs> Full on in the choke point and everybody fell for it. Two down, but Sylvanas got killed too. Can you imagine Sylvanas surviving? That would be the end of the keep and maybe even the game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fallen down! No! Yeah, that's a kill. She is dead. Alright, they're moving back to the Immortal. Check this one out. Check... I mean, what the hell? Have a look at this one. Bam! The arrow of death and the apocalypse follow-up. A work of art. It's unbelievable to me that only two of them died there instantly. Like, so many more should have fallen in that situation. And now it's nearly 20 versus 20, but it's so much closer again. This game, back forth all the time. Everybody's just going for the big hits and the big fights. 12 kills to 12. Stitches now. He got the hook on 20. Master Hooker. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding, my friend. The Acrobat is in too. And they want this one. No 20 hits. There's the hook. There's the hook. And Anu with the save. Ooh, that arrow gets dodged completely. Far and wide. Straight to an A. Oh, and another hook connects. And this time it's Wubi who saves him. Wubi saves him. Can Wubi save himself though? They go for the Immortal and they get the Immortal. Smexy! The Smex Master! And he's dead! Anduin! Yeah, not manning up today. They made all of this happen without the level 20 talent on the other hand. Keep that in mind. They had no 20. Now they got their Storm talents. And off we go. Top side. Yeah, this one is not going to do a whole lot. It's 100% shield, but nobody's going to push with it. Not in a 5 versus 4. So, uh, yeah, a bit of damage against the keep, maybe. Possible. At least baiting them out a little bit and occupying them here, so yeah. It's gonna land a few hits, but it's not gonna take it down. 18 minutes in. Yeah, maybe half HP. Not even that. It's another hit connected, but yeah, that's of course not enough. That kill, the one that they got against Anduin, that was all they needed and it was so important. Without that kill, it's a completely different situation. Yeah, and so Ice Cream is getting used to this. He's fighting his stride. He's like, let's go, boys. One more coming. Let's make it happen. Game isn't over. 19 minutes Battlefield of Eternity. <laughs> Woo. Okay. And all eyes on Stitches. Playtime. Bunkering up. Uh-oh. He's in trouble and he knows it. 
He's in trouble and he knows it. Wooby is dead. Yeah, now we're talking bottom forward. They can take it if they want. Five versus four, the whoopster gets caught and he is dead. And they're stealing the camp away, which means more pressure later on. And of course, throwing the hooks out even further. <laughs> Soundless is fighting tooth and nail right now to stay in this. They want to go to that offline event and they are doing what they can here to not lose on this map. Map three, they need to win it. And they're doing everything they can now. After a disastrous, an absolute disastrous early game. They got wiped. It was a five-man wipe. And they clawed their way back into it. But the big question is, of course, still, can they bring it over the time and really win it? Now, 12 seconds, 10 until we have Blaze back. Immortal is spawning in the meantime, so maybe even an initial starting point for Team Soundless to play around with. But, yep, this is, this is going to be the big one. With 20 minutes on the board, we're going to talk about a pretty dangerous situation for either team. Now, to be... F I see. I mean, there's still four at the bottom of the map. Uh, but it would at least be keep. Probably core. So yeah, this is... This is for all the marbles now. 48,000 damage on Liming. 43,000 for Sylvanas. Who gets the kill? Does the arrow combo connect again? Can they make it work? Azerite, under pressure, Diablo moving in, completing it, going straight for it again. Azerite, where's that arrow? Doesn't throw it out yet, moves back already. There's the arrow, and he gets dodged completely. They're paying attention to the arrows now. And what a save by Smexy. Market would have been hit by that hook for sure. They move back, they go to the fountain, and it opens up more damage. Soundless is dropping it to 50%. Soundless is dropping it to 50%. Oh. What on earth? Bottom Ford is in trouble too. That's the next thing. Yeah, and now they can attack. And they're burning it down quickly as well. Market can of course make the plays here. So together with Hanzo, both of them great against the Immortal. And it's nearly a 50-50 setup. Not quite there. Hook again. Yeah, so Ice Cube is throwing them out left, right and center. Anticipating positions. Trying at least. But does he land that one hook again against someone? I mean, like Hanzo or Anduin. He did it before. Can he do it again? Look how far back Smexy is. Smexy is so far back. So is Azerite. Both of them know exactly what's up here. And Sylvanas is pushing out the bot lane a little bit. If she gets catapults onto the core 22 minutes into the game, you can kiss that shield goodbye. Sylvanas is pushing. Sylvanas is on it. She's going for it. Marke is sitting there. Marke is going for the macro play again. And it forces the blue team back. They will have to move back. There's the attack. Arrow is out too. Diablo is in trouble. And Anduin is the first one to die. But Diablo follows. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Soundless. How? Double kill. Triple kill. They go for the next one. Marke on the run. Goodbye, my friend. Nice try. But not today. Get over here! Quick kill, 18 kills to 6, and Team Soundless is taking a big dump in the second half of the game on Chili Mountain. Azerite is soloing for the core. He's, he can do nothing here. He's trying. Dibbles is back to, can they somehow save their core? And I'm talking about the red team now. Azerite is dead. He knows it. And goodbye. Dibbles is the only survivor. Now, they will have a couple of the heroes back for the defense, but I don't know if it matters at this point. Yeah, the core is taking a bit of damage on the shield, but it didn't even get touched. Oh my god, can you stop, please? They are dead already. They have a family. Chia makes it out. <laughs> oh my god. What are these plays? No, Nano P. Why? Why are you doing this to me? My heart can't take it. I'm aging here. I'm not a Sprite Chicken anymore. Seriously, you're taking years of my life expectancy. The counterplay attempt. A4, they're just creating space. The keep is down. Can they get the kills? Vala hit after hit. Falender. 
Falender everywhere! Diablo, he get into the bunker with zero hit points! Silvana's dead! The core attack! Diablo down! Vala also eliminated! This has... I don't know... <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? This has to be game. It is game. They get it. Oh my god. What is this series? Someone, please. Please make it like make it never stop. This has to go on forever. Big win for Soundless. We go to game number four, everybody. Unbelievable. Game number four, and boys, the drama train has hit hard. Oh my god. So, first of all, the last series was absolutely insane. The last map was incredible. That was just crazy. But believe me, emotions were flying high after the game because Malfurion picked a talent that he is not allowed to take. The admin banned the level 20 tranquility upgrade. And they banned it a couple of days ago, talking to the captains previously and telling all of them, listen, for this weekend, this talent is banned, all the captains agreed, so the admins talked to them. The player, on the other hand, I mean, again, emotions are flying high, adrenaline is pumping, you're at the end of the game, player didn't think about it, lock the talent in, bam. Then the fight ends, there's one battle, one fight where it's more or less involved, but even before that, Anduin and Diablo get caught out, and of course, after the game, Chili Mountain looked at it, and Marcus says, like, hey guys, uh, that's a free win for us, you just used the talent and you're not allowed to do that obviously soundless disagrees a little bit and uh yeah emotions were flying high the admin rewatched the game and then at the end of the day made the decision to let the series continue first pick first ban both went over to uh, chili mountain and also the map choice so they go for cursed hollow and they still have first pick that gives them a bit of an advantage soundless was saying like guys listen we're sorry we don't want to lose this one but uh at the same time whatever other punishment you give us is fine he didn't think about it it was just a hectic game he locked it in we think it had nothing to do with the team fight victory towards the end but yeah discussions everywhere doesn't really help that Bakult is also now back here but obviously Wubi is still playing Bakult I don't know what exactly made it happen so that he couldn't play initially but at least now he's present and drama everywhere so uh, yeah emotions are flying high here so there's uh, definitely a little bit of tilt going around especially on the side of chili mountain i would say because yeah they are quite emotional about that and i mean it's understandable if they would have gotten a free win on the last one they would now be allowed to go to paris but as we're heading into cursed hollow we'll see are we getting game five now we got brightwing on the side of the blue team we get rexa and the bans again, Falstad, one of Marcus's favorites here, and also a big map, of course. The birdie is great. Also, Zeratul uh, is getting banned. <sighs> Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff for sure. So, Stitches and Malfurion are both taken. Apparently, they want to give them a taste of their own medicine. This time, it's Gia with Stitches, and Malfurion is played by Smexy. But boy, that series has all. It has the drama. It has the back and forth action, big comebacks, kind of fantastic, but yeah, a lot of party in the internal channels here. Okay, so, what are we getting for the last ban? Rhea is getting banned, I mean again, a map with two bosses, so if you have Exterminator, you can try and take them out a little bit quicker, there's more to it than that, but obviously it really helps if you have some tools in your arsenal that can take down the bosses quickly. You get a kill or two and you can maybe go for a double boss play as well, so yeah, there's a lot around that. But, well as it stands, we got our last ban coming through, and it's time for Chili Mountain to make a decision. What do they ban out? Falender, Ninopi? The Vikings. Better safe than sorry. Not gonna run into a Viking composition on the other side this time. So yeah, good for them. And here we go. The blue team. And they know what they're up against. They have the Stitches set up against them and Malfurion. Misha can help with that a little bit. If Misha is in these fights, then she could eat the hook. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> this was already a spicy series, but it definitely got worse now. Anubarak is getting taken. So we got the big cockroach in, and we got Sylvanas. So that's Anubarak into a Rexa follow up on the stun, and Sylvanas with a Wailing Arrow as an option. Cocoon, big here. Really big. Potentially against Stitches after a hook combo. 
Greyman gets taken. Yeah, if you get that hook and Greyman is on point with Smexy rooting the target down, Cassia also on it. That is tons of damage. Okay, so Dehaka. Whoopee. Locks in another global. Has the control through the tongue. Has the global. Yeah, there's a lot. Alright, everyone. Good setup for them. Dangerous setup. <laughs> Ooh. Fallen on a Samuro. Alright, okay. The Samuro plays. Guys, Cursed Hollow. Who makes it to Paris? We might decide it right now. We might get game number five. Let's go straight to map number four. A lot of emotions in this game now. Twitch chat went kind of crazy as well. People arguing in favor of Team Soundless. People arguing in favor of Chili Mountain. Everybody, of course, with an opinion right now. The Monday, quarter, Monday quarterbacks came out in uh, force. We got on the left side, so Ice Cream on Anubarak, Shamsig on Brightwing, Hydra on Rexa, Nenopi on Sylvanas, and Falander on Samuro. Definitely a bit of an X Factor pick for them now. On the right side of the map, Chili Mountain. With a Mako on Grey Main, Wubi on Dehaka, Smexy on Malfurion, Gia on Stitches, and Azerite on Cassia. I mean, the entire situation was spicier to begin with, especially since there is now multiple subs on the side of Chili Mountain. Now, of course, that is absolutely according to the rules, which makes it legit. But at the same time, it left a bit of a bit of an aftertaste for some people, at least. As you could see, not only on uh, Twitch, but also some other social media platforms throughout the last couple of weeks. But then, of course, that talent pick, yeah, that is definitely not according to the rules. So a lot of back and forth here. And fans of the blue team were very much so in their camp and were defending it, especially since they argued it didn't have an effect in the last fight. Whereas, of course, Mark and his boys had a different opinion on all of this, saying it was literally what won the battle. The admin was not agreeing with them, and therefore we find ourselves in game number four. No death win. A little bit of action is already going on there, but you have to ask at this point, of course, how much it impacted the players, especially on the side of Chili Mountain. It was an absolutely emotional third game to begin with, absolutely crazy, and definitely not an easy loss to swallow. And then on top of that, that situation occurred, and phew, some people making the argument that if they saw it, they should have paused the game and solved the situation there, not after the game is over. Yeah, we talked a little bit earlier about what people think about the subs that are playing for them and if you agree or disagree with that situation, but I guess now we have a bigger question. Should they have lost the last game because of that pick, accidental or not? Did it play a role? I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can easily just like head back and uh, take a look at what happened there. The admin, of course, needed a bit to go through the replay, but you guys are in easier position for that, but yeah. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Now, we get the cams taken. And, of course, while we're waiting for the action to really uh, pick up here a little bit, another big shout-out to the people that are supporting not only the YouTube channel, but also the work on Twitch. Just generally everything that we're doing with Heroes of the, Spo uh, of the Storm here. You guys make it possible to implement new stuff like the replay system, the Insta replays that we have here, and other things. So, big shout-out to all of you. And if you guys don't support the channel yet, but you would like to chip in a little bit and help out to keep the esports coverage of Heroes of the Storm alive here and the lights on on the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash and you can do that there. As mentioned before, without all of you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So, as it stands, we get our level 4 talents in. And we have, at least for now, for Samuro, the way of the wind and one with the wind. Whereas on the other, oh, Stitches with another big hook here. Whereas on the other side, it's a pretty traditional setup now for Stitches after the rework. Traditional is probably the wrong word. Like standard patchwork creation into Tenderizer that has been more or less established as the go to build. Maybe with the exception of maps that are sporting a lot of globes, as for example, Tomb of the Spider Queen. And Nubarak is going for the big engage too. And yeah, they're playing this a bit risky. I mean, the Samuro pick, first and foremost, is not what you normally see there. Great route, by the way, from Smexy, allowing Maka to go for the channel. Uh, so they've definitely found their stride here. And that's currently still full focus on the camps now. Now, the first one was a freebie. 23 stacks, by the way, for Cassia. I mean, damn, son. She got some sick value out of this. Also, they are looking for Sylvanas. Look at Nenopi here. He's like, yeah, I can smell something isn't quite right. So he gets right behind the gate again. 
Uh, in the meantime, the bot lane gets attacked, uh, and they're trying to go for Wubi. Wubi is wrecking Farlander here. Yeah, going up against the Whoopstar on the solo lane is never something that you're going to be very happy with in the long run. That, on the other hand, is the first kill in the game, and first blood goes to Soundless. They get the kill against Smexy. He's eliminated, and that's just as we have the Tribute appearing on the map. So there's an opportunity now to draw even with Chili Mountain and lock this one in. And maybe even get a kill. Oh, the block. The big bloody block against Gia. They let him get out, and with Devour, he can keep himself topped up. And all of a sudden, it's Nano P who's in trouble. Nano P is on the run. The Wolf takes him down. Greymane with a kill. Chili Mountain opening this one up again as they take down Rexa too. Rexa eliminated. Ooh, those were two important kills. And of course, the tribute gets taken. Yeah, look at this. Nano P is so, in so much trouble. Greymane following up on it, getting the kill. And then up at the top, Rexa gets body blocked from Gia, who actually was the one that was in the most danger as this all started, since he was body blocked heavily into that little nook there and couldn't get out. So, for now, we have two kills to one. And level 10 should soon kick in. But that opening, solid for the team in red. Then again, they might lose Smexy again. And yes, there it is. They kill. Taken down by Brightwing. Great aggressive rotation from Team Soundless. And they're drawing even in the kill count. <laughs> the problem that I have right now is look at Azerite. Holy shit. Five minutes into the game and he's at 39 stacks already. That could be a problem. Big risk also. Level 10 against you and you're deciding to go boss? They're gambling. They're gambling right now a bit. And this is not going well for them. The red team is taking over. It was a big gamble and they're losing it right now. Oh boy. Level 10 and the boss against you and potentially the curse. Oh my god. That is a disaster. Soundless was going for a big question mark there and they went YOLO. They went YOLO and they're getting punished for it. They got the level 10. But the curse is there, so Ice Cream is about to go down. The attack in the middle, Azerite, he's stacking, 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 but he might die. And he doesn't. He just doesn't. They keep him alive, and there's the helping hand. Instead, uh, Hydra is the one that is in trouble, and Hydra gets murdered too. Oh my god, four kills to two. The fort at the bot lane is already gone. The curse is also pressuring the fort at the top, and it's likely going to fall as well. Now, to be frank, Samuro might be able to save it, but it's still taking a ton of damage. And of course, they are moving through the bot lane like hot butter through cheese, as that boss is just wrecking everything inside. Even though it's early on in the game, the curse makes it possible. They got a siege giant camp too, guys. It's, it's six minutes and 50 seconds in the game. We're going to see a keep fall. There's another kill. Misha is down. It's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. Soundless is dying here. And Chili Mountain, there's no way they can go all the way here. The fort in the middle, the fort at the top, they're all on. And oh my god, the kill. No! Hydra! Rexa is dead. The core is losing hit points. Greyman on the core. They're ending it. They're ending it. They're fucking ending it! Seven minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Are you kidding me? The entire admin discussion took more longer than that. That's the win. Chili Mountain goes to Paris. What just happened here? Chili Mountain with a win in the series. They go to the finals. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.